So hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jayadal Sanya and in this video I am going to explain what is a queue data structure. So first of all let's try to understand uh, what does it mean by a queue data structure. So a queue is a linear data structure that is open at both the ends and the operations are performed in first in first out order. So basically you can imagine a queue as a uh, tube or a pipe in which let's say if you are inserting pebbles from one of the end and let's say you have inserted three pebbles pebble 1, pebble 2 and pebble 3 in the tube and now if you want to remove the pebbles from the other end not from that end from which you have inserted the pebbles if you try to remove the pebbles then obviously the pebble which you have inserted first will be removed out and then the next pebble and then the next pebble so basically whichever item was inserted first inside the queue that item will be the first to get out of the queue so basically queue has two different endpoints uh, one of the endpoint is called the front or the head and the other endpoint is called the back tail or rear. there are different names for it so basically the end or the rear end from which you insert the element is called nq the operation is called nq operation and the end from which you remove the items is called the dq operation so basically this is what a queue data structure means so while mentioning the definition of queue i explained that there is a FIFO principle that is first in first out principle followed by queue data structure. A queue, you can imagine a queue like a line waiting to purchase tickets. Let's say you have gone to a movie hall and you are waiting in a queue in order to buy the tickets for the movie. So basically this is what a queue can be represented as. Here you can observe this is the front end of the queue and this is the rear end of the queue. And from the front end you get the entry to the hall. So basically you can observe the person 1 P1 came out from the front end of the queue and then the person P2 is standing and then the person P3 is standing then P4 and now person 5 is coming to enter the hall and it's to be inserted from the rear end of the queue. So basically person 1 was the first to come in hence is the first to get out from the line. So basically this is what a first in first out principle means. So now let's understand what are the characteristics of a queue data structure. So at any instance, queue can handle multiple data. Let's imagine you have inserted five elements inside the queue and you have inserted one more in element. So now let's try to understand the characteristics of a queue. So at any instant, you can find more than one number of elements present inside the queue. So queue can handle multiple data. And as we know that both the ends of the queue are accessible and both the ends of the queue are open. So different variations of the queue allow you to access the both. As we know that both the ends of the queue are open, we can access both the ends for removal and insertion of the elements. If I talk about the speed of the operations on the queue, then queues are very fast and flexible as well. So now let's try to understand what all basic operations can you apply on the queue data structure. I already explained that one of the operation is called NQ operation. The NQ operation means that if you want to insert inside the queue, then you need to perform the NQ operation and the operation is called NQ. And now let's say if you want to remove anything from the queue, the operation is called DQ operation. Now if you want to take a look at the front end of the queue, that means if you try to DQ the queue, then which element will be removed from the queue, then you can use the peak operation. The peak operation will return the value but it will not remove the element from the queue. So the next operation possible on the queue is the rare. If you want to find that which element is present at the rare end of the queue then you can call this method, apply this function and you can get the idea of that element. And if you want to check, let's say you have created a queue of uh, size 10 and if you want to check that I want to insert one more element whether the queue is full or not then you can use the operation is full operation that will say whether the capacity of the queue is full or not. And the last operation is to know whether anything is present inside the queue or not. If nothing is present and if you try to remove element from the queue then it will give you an error. Hence this operation is very important to know if the queue is empty or not. So till now we were discussing a simple queue in which the insertion takes place from one end and the removal of the element takes place from the other end. But there are many different types of queue possible as well. So let's see. The first type of the queue is input restricted queue. So basically in this kind of queue the input or the insertion of the element can be done from only one end while the removal can be done from any of the end. So the next type of the queue is output restricted queue. So basically in this it is somewhat similar to input restricted queue 
but over here the restriction is on removal of the element you can only use one of the end for removal of the element while you can use both the ends for inserting the element inside the queue and now the next variation of a queue is a circular queue in which both the open ends are actually joined and the operations are performed in first in first out order over here also the principle of queue is maintained in circular queue as well so there is one more type of queue that is called double ended queue in which there is no restriction on inserting the element or removal of the element basically you can use both the ends for insertion or removal of the element and the last type of queue is very much important that is priority queue because many programming languages use priority queue in order to implement the heap data structure so the heap data structure is internally dependent upon queue data structure so that queue is priority queue so in the priority queue elements are prioritized based on their value let's say prioritizing the element based on its value the larger element the highest the priority so in that manner you can use the priority queue to prioritize the element so this were the types of the queue so now you might be wondering how to represent the queue so basically queue itself can be represented with the help of other dependent data so an array can be used to represent a queue so over here i have shown an array representation of q so basically you take a fixed size of array and you will be using pointers in order to denote the rare and the front end so we know that the front end is the end from which the elements will be removed or the dequeue operation will be applied and the rare end is used for the insertion of elements so basically these are the pointers that will keep the track of the elements on the rare end and the front end and over here the nq will take place from this side and the dequeue will take place from this side so basically we can use an array to represent a queue as well so now let's see the other type of representation of queue so we can use a linked list as well in order to represent a queue many data structures if i talk about java programming language then internally the queue which is present inside the collection has internally implemented linked list data structure so over here you can use the linked list data structure inside the linked list we know there is a head so over here what will be doing will be keeping the pointers at the head or the front end of the queue and there will be one more pointer which will be pointing to the tail of the link list and that is the rare pointer and the insertion can be done at the rare end so inserting the element at the tail of the queue is very easy it can be done in order of one and if you want to remove the element each and every time you can target the head node and remove the head node and update the head node so basically in this way you can use a link list to represent a queue as well as we have learned a lot about queue let's try to understand the applications of queue a queue is used in operating system for task scheduling and resource allocation as well apart from this let's take an example of a communication system in which the sender keeps on sending the messages to the receiver and it is possible that the pace of the sender and receiver might not be synchronized so in order to achieve synchronization in that sense we can use a queue for the fast and slow devices as well it is also used in router and switch and for mailing queue as well and different variations of queue give you different data structures the different variations like dq can be used to solve problems priority queue can be used as a heap data structure and much more so that was it for in this video if you really enjoyed the video do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends if they are also looking for same content and also subscribe to this channel if you are looking forward to watch such interesting videos thank you